Portugal is one of history's most successful survivors. It is but a small country whose population rose slowly from 1 million to 9 million over 800 years. In that time, it acquired a political and cultural autonomy within Europe. It also made its mark on every corner of the globe through colonization, emigration and commerce. But Portugal was more than a tenacious survivor. It was also a pioneer in many of the historical developments of the European world. The Portuguese created Europe's first modern nation state whose frontiers have not changed since the fall of the old Muslim Kingdom of the West in the Algarve. Later, they pioneered the concept of overseas colonization on the islands of the Atlantic. By the 16th century, they had found the sea lane to Asia. In America, Portugal's conquest of the Brazils outstripped in size the British colonies which were to become the United States of America. Roman troops entered the Iberian Peninsula in 218 BC. They stayed to rule over the territory they called Hispania, but in the west, the part known as Lusitania, they were met with strong resistance. Native inhabitants such as the Lusitanian shepherd warrior Viriatu put up strong resistance Viriato became known as the Terra Romanorum, Terror of the Romans. It is from these ancient origins that we get the Portuguese riding horse of today, the Lusitano. Thirty years after the French Duke William of Normandy invaded England, Henry, Duke of Burgundy, was starting to extend his earldom to where Moors and Christians were fighting over Western Iberian territories. In 1128, Henry's son, Afonso Enrique, became first king of Portugal, establishing a royal capital at the heavily fortified city of Guimarães in the north of Portugal. He was helped by crusaders and Templars to seize Lisbon and Santarém further south. century when the power of the Templars was challenged and their future threatened by the Pope, King Denish created a new religious order to replace them, the Order of Christ. King Denish planted pine trees along the shores of his land to prevent Atlantic winds from driving sand over cultivated fields inland. He could hardly have foreseen a future in which these pine trees would become the timbers for caravellas, the ships that would brave the South Atlantic seas. On their sails, they would carry a symbol of the cross representing the order of Christ, as it had represented before the Templars. Don Denish was known as the Troubadour King. His queen, Isabel, is remembered in a legend, the Miracle of the Roses. 
Queen Isabel was greatly concerned for the sick and the poor. She would visit them secretly, carrying bread for them beneath her cloak. One day, when she was asked what she had hidden there, by a miracle, she was able to reveal not bread, but a cloak full of roses. The important battle in the history of the Portuguese monarchy was fought against Castilian armies at Aljubarrota in August 1385. Don João, or John, master of the military religious order of Avis, was supported by his commander, Don Nun Alves Pereira. John I, as he became, superseded the existing monarchy because he alone was able to stand firm against the Spanish. After the victory, the Order of Avish set to work designing the great monastery of Batalia, and a Carmelite church was created in Lisbon. The Avis dynasty began its ascent in international relations by seeking a stable alliance against Castile. In 1386, John I married Philippa of Lancaster, granddaughter of Edward III of England. He signed the Treaty of Windsor, which was to be the bedrock of Portuguese diplomacy until well into the 20th century. Infant Don Henrique, known in English as Henry the Navigator, was the third son of John I and Queen Philippa. He became commander of the Military Order of Christ, which was responsible for maritime expeditions bringing Portuguese settlers to the islands of Madeira, the Azores, and off the west coast of Africa, the Cape Verde Islands and Sao Tome. Within the space of a hundred years, Portugal became a colonial power and dominated world trade in corn, cotton and sugar. of John II in the late 1400s, the Portuguese began their heavy exploitation of African gold. They also took slaves to Portugal, and this slave trade later enabled their successful colonization of Brazil. It was John II who cleverly signed the Treaty of Tordesillas, in effect keeping the Spanish colonization of Latin America to the west and leaving Brazil to the Portuguese.
1488, the Portuguese discoverer Bartolomeu Dias made the first voyage around the tip of Africa known at that time as the Cape of Storms. John II then renamed this the Cape of Good Hope because it opened up the world to the east of Africa and the passage to India. By all accounts, the experience at the time was stormy rather than hopeful. The sailors believed that in the angry storms overhead, they could see a muscular monstrous being with an evil menacing expression. They named it Gigant Adamus Thor. In 1495, Don Manuel I came to the throne as 14th King of Portugal. His reign was to be a golden age of untold prosperity as the wealth of Asia began to pour into Portugal, the richest country in Christendom. Manuelan architecture includes many nautical references in its elaborate stonework, particularly the Monastery of Geronimus and in churches dating from the early 1500s. Another leap forward for the Portuguese Empire came in 1498 when a small fleet commanded by Vasco da Gama reached the coast of India. From then on, Indian pepper and cotton, Indonesian perfume and spice, and Chinese silk and porcelain were all in circulation back in Portugal. The most ambitious and warlike of the first Portuguese in Brazil was Pedro Alves Cabral. 1500 was the official year of his discovery. Thirteen ships transported 1,500 people to found the new colony in the name of Manuel I of Portugal. And a monk, Henrique of Coimbra, celebrated mass on the beach. Perhaps the most celebrated of all Portuguese monarchs is Don Sebastião who came to the throne in 1568 when he was only 14. In 1578, his armies were defeated and he disappeared in the Battle of Alcacer Kabir in Morocco. Sebastião was single and had no successors. He was very popular and many among his followers believed that he would one day return. But in reality, the death of Don Sebastião lost Portugal independence. For the next 60 years, Castilian Spanish kings, Philippe the first, second and third, ruled over the devastated population. Oh, 
In the 15th and 16th centuries, Portugal conquered all the seas, and if more worlds there were, there they would go. So wrote the most celebrated Portuguese poet, Luís de Camões. His epic poem, As Lusíadas, was first published during his, the short life of Don Sebastião, to whom it is dedicated. Camões died just one year after the Portuguese defeat at Alcacer Kabir. The revolt of the Portuguese against Spanish domination began on the 1st of December 1640. The protesters encouraged their premier duke, John of Braganza, to declare Portuguese independence and so free them permanently from such Castilian impositions. He agreed to lead the insurrection and to lend his name to the house of an insurgent dynasty. With military backing made possible by Portugal's alliance with England, independence from Castile was maintained. The alliance was then sealed by the marriage of Catherine of Braganza to Charles Stuart of England and Scotland. The princess took with her a huge dowry, two million pieces of gold, and England was offered a colonial toehold in the Portuguese Empire at the African port of Tangier and Indian port of Bombay. Catherine, it is said, introduced tea to England. The New York district of Queens is named after her. When an earthquake shook Portugal in 1755, a large area of central Lisbon was destroyed. In the Algarve, a tidal wave devastated the coast. The country was fortunate in having at this time the Marquês de Pombal as prime minister to King José I. The Marquês challenged the fatalistic and manipulative control of the Jesuits at that time. He implemented control over the quality and the sale to the English of port wine. He also organized the reconstruction of the Baixa or downtown area of Lisbon. We conclude with an episode which effectively changed forever the nature of the luso britannic alliance. In 1890, Portugal came into collision with British interests in Africa and had to withdraw its claims on the Zambezi heartlands between Angola and Mozambique. In Portugal, people refer to this simply as the Mapa Cor de Rosa, the pink map. Much of Portugal's history of the 20th century, its economic isolation 
and its determination to hang on to its African colonies was partly a product of late 19th century loss. We hope that you enjoyed this time travel. Thank you for your visit and have a nice day. Steve.